Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, the CCC PAC uh, 2.0. We're getting back together to talk about our um, emission targets from the draft um, climate action plan. Uh, it, you may or may not know we've contracted with um, Cascadia Consulting uh, to work on our climate action plan. They've been gathering data and uh, putting together some draft strategies uh, for the climate action plan. And part of that is um, determining what targets the city should be aiming for when we're thinking about greenhouse gas emissions reductions. So um, you received a draft of these mitigation strategies and um, our proposed targets for these different strategies. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, so I just wanted to get some feedback from you all about what you think. Um, I have a really brief presentation to just kind of frame it up for us today. Um, I don't have any particular like a agenda, but um, we, we can be pretty free form here. Um, so, hey, one. Roxy, can um, we get a copy of this at the end of the meeting? The recording or the uh, PowerPoint? Of the PowerPoint. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, Is it online now like, or not? No, it's pretty much just visualizing what's already in the uh, mitigation strategies information that I sent out as for this meeting. So oh, okay, okay. I don't know how much more informative the PowerPoint would be. All right, um, thanks. But so major questions for today are, do the targets align with community priorities? Um, the Are the targets realistic for Gig Harbor? Um, and so kind of embedded within each of these questions are, are this draft strategies that were in those documents, are those appropriate for our climate action plan? Um, what adjustments do you recommend? And should Gig Harbor align with Pierce County and state emissions reductions, or do we want to develop something more or less ambitious? So, um, this is the forecasted um, emissions reductions uh, based on uh, county and state emissions targets. Um, so you can see the, the dashed line at the top is kind of like with no, you know, no mitigation at all. And then um, these kind of dashed areas are where we can kind of where we can make more impact since these top things are all gonna be the top part kind of above that bright pink line. Those are all kind of state and federal uh, regulations. So um, this kind of dashed uh, more pastel areas where we can make a change. And so you can see these uh, different targets and scenarios broken out by type um, and uh, kind of forecasting where we might want to go over the next 20 years. Um, so we're going to talk about these, get some feedback to the consultant, and mm -hmm. then um, finalize our adaptation and mitigation strategies. The consultant's going to do a multi-criteria cost-benefit analysis. Um, based on, you know, what the city has as its current capacity. Uh, public engagement is ongoing. We currently have a survey out to the public, so please do take that. We welcome feedback from folks who visit or work in Good Harbor. And then we're also having an internal staff workshop in May. So a lot of things going into the plan. Um, does anyone need to see those uh, strategies or the wedge again? Yeah, because we're going to be discussing that, right? Might right, well yeah. Keep that on the board because that's maybe less the wedge. But yeah, more here. Yeah. Because um, it's, yeah, this, yeah, this is where all the, this is where all the meat and potatoes are, right? Sure, yeah. Okay, so first question, uh, do you think these targets align with community priorities? 
um, that can be a bit of a subjective um, discussion and it can have, you know, a lot of facets to it, but um, happy to get feedback on uh, what you think about these, these targets. So I had some comments on the targets, not necessarily numbers just yet, but kind of on a little bit higher level. So mm -hmm. when we say electrify new buildings or electrify passenger vehicles, which I support all that, are we talking just city buildings? Or are we talking every building in gig private electrify? residences, private businesses? Yeah, so I think that would be pushing folks to, you know, use heat pumps instead of an electric appliances rather than gas. So that, I mean, something like that could be done, although there's a large number of houses already that have been set up with natural gas. I mean, I'm assuming that some of these targets would have to be coupled with maybe updates to our building codes, because if we're going to have new houses being built, we can't just say, well, it'd be great if you had it all electric, but we can't make you do electric, so you do whatever you want, and Puget Sound Energy is giving people, you know, cheaper gas. I, I just, these are good targets, and I think they're well worth doing something. Uh, it's also coupled with the um, wanna... the state, the state is going to be requiring electrification. Oh, hello, Barbara. Um uh, I'll, I'll get to you in one second, Barbara. Do you have any other comments, Roger? No, I'll. I'll okay, I'll, I'll, I'll note talk that. later. Okay, go ahead, Barbara. Barbara Ann, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was just going to look at the reduced tree loss and um, percent reduction in tree loss. Does that mean we're going to say it's okay to re reduce the, or, you know, the current kind of a double negative there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're working on our on a tree ordinance to kind of uh, maintain older trees uh, and encourage replanting, more appropriate replanting with um, climate appropriate tree species. So that's definitely going to be in the works. I know it's a little bit funny with the double negative. Right, and that's mostly my concern is let's just make sure that we've got that, the wording the way we want it. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, are we, cause if we're, are we expecting a certain amount of tree loss? <laughs> I mean, yeah, with development and, you know, density requirements from the state, I think it's inevitable, but um, yeah, I'll ask them to kind of rethink how that's how that's phrased. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I put my hand up again. Here. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Roger. So things like uh, decarbonize aviation fuels. I mean, I, I don't think the city anywhere in the city limits uses that. Is that is that I mean are these if these goals are for the city, then maybe this goal should be taken out because I don't think that the city or anybody in a city limits has any has any ability to change or to affect that. All right. Yeah, I think that's the, an interesting question um, that that is being posed here. I think is is that what what are these goals or these targets? Um, uh, relative to what, you know, what are we targeting? Are we targeting just, are we talking just city operations or are we talking yeah. about, you know, more generally um, throughout? Because I think if we're talking more generally, it, it does get into the realm of uh, uh, a larger discussion around more, more and more and more code changes and then whether or not we're running up against state requirements, federal requirements yeah. as well. And I don't think that's the, I, I don't think that's the point of the plan. Uh, no. And so I think we definitely want to clarify that with, um, with Cascadia. Yeah. And it seems to me the electrified freight and service vehicles, what control do we have over those vehicles? 
I think that's same as the decarbonized aviation fuels, unless right. we're talking service vehicles as within the. Um, well, what does I mean, that, that, could, uh, that, could also, that could also be the city fleet. Yeah, yeah, I think that if we said city service vehicles, that would make that then more specific to Gig Harbor. Right. And I'd say that goal right there is only 25%. If we're talking just city of Gig Harbor is way too low. Okay. By 2030. I mean, we should be, we certainly have the capability of increasing that because it's, again, something that's within our control. And Jeff's supporting that with uh, EV charging stations at the city center mm -hmm. and also at the new uh, ops building. So I, that would be one I would look at maybe kicking up a little bit. Okay. Anyone else have any other thoughts on electrifying the city fleet? Well, we need to do so. Yeah. And I think those are good numbers if those are city city vehicles. I don't know how we can control vehicles that come into our town from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jeff. Sorry, just just one. I don't know how you want to run this. Proxy. I don't want to interrupt anybody, but um, yeah, just raise your hand. I, I, okay. I would encourage people to raise their hands before they start speaking, please. Okay. okay. So just one comment on that. We are such a small town that we honestly don't replace our vehicles as often as one might think because we just don't get many miles on it. I mean, that that Tahoe that engineering uses, it's only got 70,000 miles on it. And it's a 2002, or I think, or 2003. So it's tw 20 plus years old. Um, it's surprising how many, how long we keep vehicles here. So it's just, it'll be a decision. We will be able to put the infrastructure in to be able to handle many more city fleet vehicles by 2030, but they may not come up for replacement by then, but just something to think about. We might be spending that's, money when we would otherwise not suggest it. Gotcha. That's good to know. But the infrastructure will be in place when that's appropriate. Thank you, Jeff. Councilmember Wood. Uh, yes. How much control do we have over the recyclable and the compostable materials that go to the landfill? Um, we could implement uh, composting. We would need to, you know, find a contractor that would be able to, to do that. Oh, I'm sure Jeff has something to say about that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Well, here's, here's what I don't I mean. We currently don't have a franchise agreement with a um, collection, waste collection agency. Um, we leave that up to Pierce County's uh, uh, current franchise with waste management. Um, of course, composting organic materials is available here in the city but we just have to ride on the coattails of what Pierce County does. So um, we could have a stronger uh, discussion with waste management, but we would need to require a franchise agreement. And right now we're way behind on franchise agreement renewals. So we'd have to prioritize that. Okay, that's good. Um... It could also be, you know, uh, a lot of people live in single family homes. In Gig Harbor, it could also be a matter of citywide education around how to compost at home. Uh, Barbara Ann. I'm muted. <laughs> there, I'm unmuted. So um, it also depends on how you're measuring this. If the intent is to just increase the rate of participation in those programs, um, you know, that's a different kettle of fish than figuring out the um, service agreements. So we'll probably need to think about that a little bit in terms of how we want to measure success. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> gotcha. Okay, um, Carl, go ahead. 
Well, thank you. Um, so I, I was thinking more about this, uh, you know, the electrification of existing buildings and, and new buildings uh, and also uh, passenger vehicles, um, aviation fuels, things like that. I think maybe what we should maybe and maybe this is what this is focused on. That's and it's in the background. Um, but, you know, it might be these these targets and goals might be better served if we if the city made a commitment to lobbying for those changes um where mm -hmm. it's to private development and and maybe that's stated somewhere um in the draft plan and i haven't seen it but i think that would make more sense that is something we have control over if, and that of course yeah that's, and of course that's council direction but if it's something that is in this plan then it's something that interested council members then could point to uh, when we talk about those lobbying efforts and say, yeah, well, our plan says this is what we're going to do. So I have support um, for that effort. So uh, I think that's something maybe we should talk with Cascadia about as well. That makes sense. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councilmember Henderson. Oh, I think Jenny had her hand up before I did. Okay, Councilmember Wook. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think it would be interesting also to look at what uh, Pierce County as a whole is doing what their numbers are and Kitsap County as a whole, because we, we sort of uh, touch both of those areas. And uh, it might be easier as we lobby the state or as we do things ourselves, if we, uh, if we sort of uh, look at what they're doing and combine efforts here and make it a larger area instead of a small area and, and make sure what we're, the percentages we're going after either align with those or we know why they don't align with those. Gotcha. I know the consultant's looking uh, at Pierce County for guidance and like Pierce County is basically aligned with the state goals as well. So, um, you know, we can make a choice. That's one of the questions here. Um, do we want to align ourselves kind of more with those targets or come up with something on our own. Um, I should have maybe a, more of a compa comparison sheet here, but we haven't gotten that far. Uh, Council Member Henderson. Uh, yeah, um, I agree with Carl and Jenny about the lobbying or legislative groups on getting some of this done. I just wanna make sure that we don't say, well, all we gotta do is lobby them we don't have to do anything extra that i mean i i understand sometimes people like to say well it's not required of us so we're not going to do it i think the city needs to be a leader in this i'm hoping that we are, will become a leader in this and take action in areas that we can i mean electrifying the city fleet there's probably no legislation out there that says thou shalt not do more than this or you know writing some code that you know keeps more trees than what is in some other legislation. So I, I'm hoping that um, although it's extremely important to get the laws in place that help support us, I do want us to see, I want us to take action in areas that we can because the city has that option. Again, private sector, all right, fine. We're gonna have to say there's a law that makes you do it or there's a city code. But yeah, I mean, I think I'm we're hoping definitely that, uh, Cascadia talking. is looking at things that city can do yeah we yeah that is the whole point of the plan so i wouldn't worry about that um i i can't remember who had their hand up first if it was barbara Ann or carl but uh barbara Ann, do you want to go ahead um sure and <clears throat> you know i'm kind of still back to thinking about this recyclable and compostable materials is that there's a you know chicken or the egg part of that is if, if we do want to increase compostable materials, then we, you know, that may um, kind of go into the agreements we're reaching with Pierce County, no, us, <laughs> about services provided. And if we're going to be kind of participating in that decision-making and we want to uh, do a more, um, serious job about getting participation in composting, then there will be kind of a, like I said, a chicken or the egg thing is we'll figure out what we need. And then that may, a big part of that may be how we set up our contracts. Gotcha. 
<clears throat> okay, uh, Carl. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Oh, I just wanted to uh, respond to uh, Council Member Henderson there, and uh, I agree completely. And I, my, the statement I made earlier was certainly not to, um, yeah, not to say that we should focus all of our efforts on lobbying. I was thinking of uh, more the private sector, I think, in that regard. And the thing that we, the things that we can control, uh, as far as um, how the city does things um relative to our fleet relative to our buildings relative to um you know re increasing solar all of those things that we have control over i think those should be very concrete um and spelled out clearly uh whereas you know those other items that we don't have as much control over directly i think that's where we want to try and look at where we can make changes and i think also to your point uh relative to our local codes we certainly can make changes to our to our local codes as long as we're staying within uh you know the bounds of the of of state and federal law and guidance um but i think that is, those are places where we we definitely should be exploring and uh, looking to see where we can make those changes that would have effect uh at the local level uh so i just wanted to clarify what i was where, where i was going with that and i i completely agree with you council member Anderson. Uh, Barbarian, did you did you mean to have your hand up? Okay, great. Um, all right, I want to kind of transition Anderson. to the next uh, kind of question that we have, which is, do these targets align with um, community values? Um, so I heard a little bit about moving our electric fleet, uh, you know, being a bit more aggressive with that. Of course, we don't want to just get rid of something because you know, we want to buy something new. It sounds like, according to Jeff, we will have the infrastructure available to transition the fleet when um, things kind of run their course. Um, but as far as any of these other targets that we see, do any of these seem a little bit, you know, maybe above or below what you think is possible for the city of Gig Harbor and its current capacity? Councilmember Wook. Yeah, so so that question goes up to electrify new buildings, mm -hmm. and uh, and it says that we're a hundred percent in twenty thirty, and stay at a hundred percent through twenty forty. Is is that reasonable? Um, is that reasonable? I think so. Okay. Yeah, with we're thinking about new construction, you know, right. because right. we can just kind of be like, yeah, no more fossil fuel use in new and that's homes city buildings uh public buildings is that what that is all all buildings and yeah, including I, uh, uh homes um maybe jason gano can speak to this but i'm fairly sure that it's going to be a statewide requirement jason do you want to do you want to talk to us about that yeah happy to the state is probably going to trend that way so i mean it, it would couldn't I, I don't think it really makes sense for you guys to waste I don't want to say waste time but work on legislation that the state would just come and override it anyways um that's just, yeah. just something they're they're going to do um they've already made it so you can't put new pipe infrastructure in new home construction um gas is just getting more and more expensive which is interesting like PSC just put out their new rates and like with people less people using gas they're just charging more um so yeah gas is just going to naturally phase out on its own um uh, so yeah, that's going to happen. You're just going to see a lot more electrical and strip heating in buildings and commercial buildings that just they can't turn their heat off because it it, it just takes too long to heat up a commercial and electric heat. So you're just you're just going to see a big shift in how buildings are heated and treated. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, Carl. Yeah. Thanks, Roxy. Um, you know, so the question about community priorities is a really interesting question, and you know, it's something obviously that we're going to be tackling uh, in this comp plan cycle uh and hopefully hearing a lot from the community on what their um what their priorities are at this point in the you know the lifespan of gig harbor um so a lot of a lot of what we're looking at here in these target slash scenarios is relative to i think the built environment um with the with the maybe with the um exception of reducing tree loss or you know the or or focused on the tree canopy although that does have some it does have some relative um 
overlap with development, obviously. Uh, but I think if we, my sense is that when we start hearing from the community and what I have heard from the community is that the natural environment is very important to us. And while all of these things do play into that, I think giving some um, some focus and make and having some focus on our natural environment in this. And I'm talking, you know, I, and I don't know what those things are exactly, but obviously sea level rise, um, you know, the king tide issues that we've had. I mean, Jeff can speak to that from the stormwater perspective and some of the problems that we're seeing around that um, uh, protection of our uh, of our our co our shorelines um, and uh, our um, uh, our rivers and, and wetlands, uh, especially. Uh, I don't know exactly where that fits into this, and maybe it's not germane to to this this discussion, or at least to to this section of the of the plan. But I think it would be worth um, discussing with Cascadia to find out, you know, and make sure that we're talking about that, or you know, because I I know that we're going to hear it. From the from the community, you know, they're they're going to look at these things and say great, and they're definitely going to see the nexus there. Uh, but um, I think more specific to those something more specific to those types of ideas would be would be good. Absolutely. Um, thanks for bringing that up. You know, this is by no means a, an exhaustive list of the strategies uh, that Cascadia is uh, developing. These are just kind of the the things where that can have, you know, kind of quantitative emissions targets attached to them. You know, it's, we can't necessarily quantify shoreline protection. I guess we could say, you know, we want to preserve so many acres or linear miles or whatever. But yeah, that is just a good reminder that I should have said, you know, this is by no means an exhaustive list of all the strategies that they're going to pick out. These are the things with emission reduction targets to them that, you know, we wanted your feedback on. But um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely ways to quantify uh, those natural resource type of uh, goals as well. Um, okay, so I'm not hearing a ton of other kind of um, feedback on the emissions targets. I don't know if anyone was able to play with the wedge at all. Barbara Ann, you're muted. So um, divert C and D materials. Can you remind me C and D construction and yeah, and demolition? Oh, okay. And then the other one that may come up as an issue is that if you're electrifying new buildings, especially if you're talking about restaurants, they really like to use gas for cooking. Yeah. So that could be something. I think we. It's, I think that there's also a bit of a social justice issue there in terms of um, protecting workers from the fumes and stuff. So, totally. Um, so, um, or the emissions from that. So, I could see that as being one that will come up, but I think we've got an extra benefit of holding strong on um, reducing fossil fuels in, in restaurant kitchens. Yeah, Jason, do you know much about um, yeah commercial spaces and how the state is dealing with um, gas infrastructure for those types of buildings? So they're currently trying to figure it out. Um, I mean, they're, 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 they're trying to do studies. The problem with commercial buildings, obviously, is they're large glass glass heats and cools like the way glass heats and cools does. So it doesn't hold heat. It doesn't, you know, it, it's, it's hot in the summer, cold in the winter. Um, so when, once you put a lot of people and computers and stuff in the buildings, they start to get warm, but people don't want to go to a warm building. Um, in order to do a pre-building warm-up with full electrical heating, you have to use what's called strip heating. And it's basically like a bunch of little tiny space heaters in the ducts that are basically just on all night because they can't heat, the, they're not powerful enough to actually heat the building up for the first two hours, like when your janitor or custodial staff gets there in the morning and turns the heat on. So they're trying to figure out if that's less efficient than actually running gas all night. I mean, gas just in the morning versus electric all night, just because it's so large and electric is not as efficient as gas for the number of BTUs you get for the space. Interesting. Thank you for that insight. That's, uh, yeah, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, okay, so I didn't hear much about uh, targets. I think that also we will continue to refine 
the targets and the the list of uh, mitigation strategies as we get more public feedback. Um, I didn't hear much about adjustments. Um, oh, Roger, did you have anything yeah. about? On the increased local solar, that's 100 megawatts by 2030. I'm assuming that's what the unit was, not percent. So Jeff? Yeah. That's 100 megawatts is a lot. Do we have that capability at all? Well, I think we're also talking about, you know, just homes. Uh, so it's not just city. Okay. It's not just the city. Uh, Jason, did you have some feedback on that? Yeah, have we thought about bringing the power provider into this question? Um, the ability to electrify that many buildings would require changing out transmission lines and transformers and all that kind of stuff. And I, I can't remember off the top of your head who you purchased your power from, but it, have we asked them if they've been capable of doing this? Okay. Gotcha. And what that will cost to the consumer, because the consumer is going to be the one paying for it in the end. It's going to be your your constituents and your and your and your people who live in the beautiful city of Bay Harbor. Gotcha. Good heads yeah. up. Uh, Brittany, do you have any feedback on that? Not exactly my realm of expertise, um, but I know that Jeff um, is in co constant conversations with Michael uh, in our engineering department. Um, I will note that any sort, I know we're way down the road here and things could even out, but um, as for lead times, when it comes to ordering infrastructure right now, it's chaos and and years to get uh, infrastructure. So um, any sort of transformers or anything like that. So as, as for supplies, if there's any upcoming need, like within the next couple of years, then that would be something we would need to know now to make sure that we have the capability and have the stock on hand. So gotcha. that's just something to keep in mind. Yeah, totally. Okay. Can I do uh, that one, one last thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, just to build on that, I would hate to see you um, put, you know, put like all these electrical vehicle charging stations and all this stuff in that just can't be used only to have that technology or those types of plugs change in three or four years when that deliveries come just because we know the nature of technology that my phone charger from two years ago doesn't work and that drives me crazy so i can't <laughs> yeah, imagine my totally. car is going to follow the same path well yeah or or your electric street sweeper or buses or whatever comes in five or ten years yeah council member henderson yeah i i mean i understand things change technology change computer cable charging things change again i I don't want that to be an excuse not to do anything because it's always going to be changing. I can guarantee you that. And electric vehicles, as we see them now, are a transition, just like hybrids were from, you know, internal combustion engines. So I'd be real cautious before we start saying, no, we, we shouldn't do this because it might change in five years. If that's the case, then we won't be doing anything. So we have to do something and we'll just deal with it. Lots of things change. I mean, goodness gracious. <laughs> I, I don't think that was the intent of the comment, just that we need to make sure that we're um, planning for and anticipating. Yeah, these I mean, that's, this is what engineers do all the time anyway, is we plan for the future and, yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, Jeff. And just to follow up from that, I mean, the, the key I think is to have the infrastructure there in the ground. And as long as we work with Penn Light and we know that we're going to take these this level of loads from these areas of town, mm -hmm. what the actual plug looks like, we'll figure that out. Is yeah. yeah. That'll be quick really. and easy to change. Yeah. Great. Um okay. So moving on to, you know, we might get out a little bit early here. Um but the county and state emissions reduction goals kind of overall not, you know, I had that list kind of broken down by specific strategies or emission type, but overall the county and state emission goals are 45% by 2030 and 70% by 2040. Um, 95% by 2050 as compared to 2015 levels. Um, so I know that's a bit abstract. I honestly don't really know how I would kind of look at that <laughs> myself. But um, 
So 45% by 2030, seven years, um, 70% by 2040, and then 95% by 2050. Do these sound like, in you know this abstract sense that we have, do these sound like reasonable goals, or do you think that Gig Harbor's climate action plan might shoot a little bit lower, might shoot a little bit higher? Um, curious to hear your thoughts. Councilmember Wook, you're muted. I don't think we should shoot for lower. I think mm -hmm. we should either shoot for the same or a little bit higher. We might have um, a problem going a little bit higher with our population numbers, but I think mm -hmm. we definitely should at least go the same. Gotcha. Thank you. Carl. Um, do it, it, there's a note that Pierce County is not committed to the reduction targets for 2040 and 2050. Yeah. Are they mm -hmm. working on that? Do we know, or is that um, what they what, have, the story behind that? Do we know? They have 20, they have a 2030 plan. Right. So yeah, I think they're probably working on their 2040. <laughs> plan. Um, we had a email from Kyla. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so yeah, it doesn't she didn't say anything about their 2040 plan, but it looks like I, I imagine they have to be working on that because you know that's kind of like the next right step. Yeah. I I I think it I think it'd be good to try and be lockstep with what with what the county is is doing and obviously what the state is doing. So uh, okay. these don't seem and we definitely don't want to be less ambitious. We should at least be as ambitious as the county is being, if not more. Sure. My opinion. Yeah. Uh, Councilmember Henderson. Um, yeah, I think the next go around when we meet, it would be good to look at Gig Harbor specific uh, numbers. So let, let's say that there was a 45% reduction in vehicle miles traveled. How many miles? I mean, I'm sure by then we'll know, hopefully, from the Cascadia, they'll do some sort of an analysis. So that way we have an idea whether everybody's got to drive half a mile less every day to meet it, or people have to drive 10 miles less every day. Because right now, like you said, it's a little bit abstract saying 45%. I'm not sure what that means, 45% of what. If I don't know what the what is, then I can't tell whether people are going to be accepting it or not. Um, yeah. So, All right, that thank could, you. That would be good for us to have to help support these schools. Yeah. Uh, Barbara Ann? Yeah, I, that pretty much sums up what I was saying, is that if it's for um, targets for government operations then yeah i think it'd be you know you've got more control over that it's easier to commit to um if it's for the population just within the city you've got another standard if it's for just the general area i think it would be harder to <clears throat> commit to that number so it's really about what you're measuring so if we can kind of get some clarity on that i think that would help yeah, um, I mean, the climate action plan is going to like mo more, more specifically target city operations because yeah, that's what we have control over, you know, those things in our kind of wheelhouse. Um, seems like we need to have kind of, yeah, more quantitative numbers for those things that we can't control and then have more kind of abstract goals for those things that we, we can't necessarily. Uh, thank you, Barbara Ann. Uh, Jason. Thank you. Um, I'm just curious, what does the enforcement mechanism look like for the things that are within the control of the city on this plan? Well, I mean, our capital improvement plan, certainly. Um, decarbonizing fuels, yeah, that's harder. Um, we're working on a tree ordinance and uh, land use controls that would help reduce tree loss. Um, and then waste diversion, I don't know that we have any kind of control over that, but 
uh, and by control, I mean like a code or anything that we could enforce. Um, and I think that would probably take some maybe education, like two way with the construction community. Um, anything else on that, Jason? No, I think I'm, I think I'm good on this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, council member Wook. You're muted. Okay. So I'm trying to give Roger a little more bandwidth since he sort of, uh, cuts out every so often. Um, so my concern, I think, is also whatever we do about miles driven, we need to be mindful that we don't have public transportation in Gig Harbor. And I don't know how that figures into it, but for our citizens, um, we don't have public transportation. So it's not easy for them to leave their car at home and get someplace without using their car. And I don't know what that looks like, but um, but that, it, that is a huge problem. I don't know that Pierce County will be giving us any more bus routes or any more frequency. Um, so so that's, a, that's a problem, I think. And I, I don't know how to fix it, but we need to be mindful of it, I think. Thanks. We, okay, yeah, we, I mean, we do have, yeah, we do have uh, bus routes in town. I guess I kind of go more through town, but um, I know that there were, yeah, it, it's definitely a consideration. Um, there, uh, the consultant's definitely talking to Pierce County about what that kind of piece of our missions, the public transit is and how we can improve it. Um, Carl, did you have a comment? Okay. Um, okay. Um, well, definitely got a lot of great notes out of this. I appreciate you all um, participating and taking time out of your busy schedules. Um, if there aren't any other comments, uh, I think we can adjourn. Um, if you think of anything uh, down the line, please do send me an email and let me know if um, anything comes up. Yeah, Carl? I was just going to say here uh, in closing, maybe um, it might be good to hear from everyone and what they would like to see presented maybe at the next at the next meeting or what 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 could be brought back maybe you were about to ask that question Roxy I'm sorry if I oh but, no that's a good one thank you stuff but I think it would be good to hear from from everybody on what 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 would be interesting to them at the next meeting um yeah so Barbara Ann yeah um yeah I just had a quick question <clears throat> I know you have I know it's mostly focused on um you know, sort of tourism and stuff like that, but you have the trolley. Is that paid for by the city? Is that run by, no? Who runs that? I know it's Pierce County. It's run by uh, Pierce, Pierce Transit. Pierce oh, yeah. really? Okay. <laughs> Actually, I, I thought they were dropping it, weren't they? Jenny, did you hear that? Uh, I, I didn't hear I didn't hear that, but the city pays for quite a bit of that, and so yeah. do our businesses and uh, the riders pay for that. In the summertime, so it's yeah, not so free. That, was, that does yeah. not come from Pierce County for us for free. No. Yeah. It's a it's a partnership, um, and there is some discussion to Council Member Rent Henderson's uh, point that there is some discussion um, about that maybe being discontinued or um, or potentially you know less uh, um, being in operation less days out of the year, and so I think that I think the city is in. Some negotiations with with Pierce with Pierce Transit on that, um, and looking at ridership. So, uh, I, it's a definitely a good point um, that Councilmember Wolf brought up, and I think it is certainly something that we need to explore and consider, uh, and should be part of this plan to to discuss um, public transportation. I think it is a huge um, huge topic for Gig Harbor. Yeah. Did you have another comment, Councilmember Wook? I, I do have one more comment on uh, following up on what Carl said. Um, so there have been cities in King County who've had the who've had gotten grants to have a little runaround bus, uh, and that deposited then folks up to say uh, Kimball Drive, and the and the smaller buses would then go out to the neighborhoods. And when they were actually on their routes, 
if somebody had groceries in there, had been to the grocery store, they would do a pretty good job of trying to get those folks home with their groceries. Uh, so, uh, and that's what we're lacking severely is is the way for to make it a to make the bus that goes through town uh, something that people want to use and they see a benefit to get where they're going. That's what it's all about, right? So yeah. thanks. Yeah, and I guess that's the reason I brought it up. The the you know the trolley is that at least I see that as a model for something that you've been able to experiment with in terms of kind of you know, having control over your own transportation issues. So yeah, maybe there's something to build on there. Thank you. Okay. Um, what does everyone want to talk about at the next meeting? I was hoping to bring back the greenhouse gas uh, emissions analysis as well as uh, results of the public engagement. Um, so if that sounds good, we can talk about that next time. Um, if there's anything else anyone really wants to talk about, happy to hear about it now before we adjourn. Um, one of the things oh, that I was... Um, I Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say um, on the greenhouse gas emissions, then it'll be more Gig Harbor specific focused. It's yeah, only talking about Gig Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bye, and then the, the only thing I was thinking about is it might not hurt to start tracking which of the initiatives are going to require um, agreements with other agencies or partners, like the recycling and composting and stuff like that. So we have a kind of clearer idea of which ones um, we're going to need to do some negotiating on. Gotcha. OK, anything else? All right, yeah, just uh, feel free to email me if anything comes up. Um, really appreciate you all taking the time. Um, glad we can adjourn a little bit early, but uh, have a great, uh, what is it, Wednesday? Have a great Wednesday, everyone. Great job. Thanks, Roxy. Bye. Bye.